Good morning, and welcome to Next Level Church. Uh, my name is Bradley Medford. Uh, I usually, on Sunday mornings, you can find me back behind the uh, production booth, either clicking some buttons or moving around some dials, but on occasion, they do give me the opportunity to get on stage and to share with you all. Um, I appreciate that chance, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I appreciate it every time it comes around. Um, today, we're going to kick off a new series that is entitled Wish List, and as you can probably gather by the uh, decorative decor on the screen, uh, it is a Christmas series. As we move into this season, we're going to go into this series. Pastor Krista did a great job last week uh, as she kind of kicked off Christmas season for us. Uh, but in the next three weeks, we're going to spend some time exploring the three things that Christmas, I think, should define for us as followers of Christ, three things that Christmas should bring about for each of us. Um, so quickly, those three are these, hope, love, and peace. And so we're going to spend three weeks, we're going to walk through each of these things. Today, I get the honor of having a conversation with you about hope. And as we get started, I, I want to remind you, as I try to each time that I speak, that I want this to feel like a conversation. I realize the online platform's a little weird for that. It doesn't necessarily lend itself to uh, you speaking back to me, but I do encourage you to comment with any questions you have along the way. Um, thoughts, uh, stories, this time of year around Christmas tends to bring up a lot of memories and stories. Feel free to share any of that stuff in the comments. I would love to see it. Um, and I want you to know that when I speak, I, I speak from a place, this is kind of that conversation thing, I speak from a place of simply sharing what God has done in my life and what he's taught me along the way. And that's one of the reasons I welcome you to join in. So, as I said, today's topic is that of hope. And I think when we talk about a specific word, it often makes sense to just start with a definition. What exactly is hope? Um, in preparing for this, I came across one explanation that I really resonated with that I want to share with you. And it, what it does is it differentiates between sort of a common meaning of hope and a, and a more biblical one. It goes like this, hope is commonly used to mean a wish. Its strength is the strength of the person's desire. But in the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised, and its strength is in his faithfulness. Think about that for a moment. How many of you have already heard somebody say, probably uh, a child, I hope I get, and then fill in the blank, for Christmas? <laughs> uh, I've definitely heard that already, and those blanks have been filled by uh, a nice camera and a gaming PC. I hope I can afford Christmas. <laughs> uh, in this context, the strength of the hope is in the person's desire. It's, it's, it's how bad you want it. You've probably used hope in this way. I certainly have. Uh, in this context, as we said here, hope is basically a wish. I hope I get a raise. I hope I meet the right person. I hope I do well on the exam that maybe I didn't study for. Uh, I hope we can afford a vacation this year. I hope everything turns out okay. I hope they don't leave. I hope they survive. All these hopes can be held with earnest desire, but their strength lies in the person doing the hoping. But as we said in this explanation, in the Bible, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and the strength of this hope. Here's the main difference. It's in his faithfulness. The strength is not in me. It's not in how bad I want something. It's in God's faithfulness. Hopefully you can see the difference there. The hope of Christmas is not a wish. It's a confident expectation, a belief in what God has done and has promised to do in the future. So as we continue to talk about hope today, that's what I want you to remember, the words confident expectation. Now, with that definition in mind, I also want to give you a, a picture. I don't know if you're like me, but I tend to think in pictures. When people say words, I can see visualizations of those things, and so it, it often helps me. So I want to give you a picture for this idea of hope of confident expectation. Um, I want you to think for a moment about a ship out on the ocean. And, and, and I don't care if it's a, a cruise ship, maybe you're in vacation mode and you're thinking like, I'm ready for a cruise, that's what I want for Christmas, or just a tiny boat or anything in between. Just imagine a ship on the ocean. Now, I'm not a sailor, I wasn't in the Navy, but this, but this makes sense to me. When a ship, no matter how large or small, wants to stay put, what does it do? It drops an anchor. 
And that anchor keeps that boat in place. Hope can be that for us. So my confident expectation of what God has promised can be an anchor to hold fast to. I hope that's making sense. Now, before I go on, I want you to know I'm fully aware that the Christmas season is not automatically joyous for all of us. We may not be walking in today filled with the hope that I'm talking about. The realities of life might be such that you're struggling to find that Christmas joy, and and I get that. We can come into the Christmas season uh, in a myriad of places ranging from abundance to poverty. Perhaps this year has been great for you. Perhaps you've been winning all year and you're cruising into the Christmas season uh, with the radio turned up, loving life. If so, praise God, thank him for that. But maybe it's not been a great year. Maybe you're facing some financial struggles. The Christmas season certainly can bring those about and put a highlight on any of those. Uh, Maybe it's relational struggles. Maybe it's a diagnosis that you've received or somebody really close to you has received. Maybe this is the first Christmas without a family member who's passed or the 10th. They don't necessarily get much easier. Maybe this is your first Christmas in a long time being single and you're struggling to navigate that. With all the storms that we can face in life, it certainly makes sense that we should want to have a solid anchor Where we place our hope, what we anchor ourselves with, matters. Uh, Let's consider these words from Matt Chandler. He's a pastor um, at a church down in Texas called the Village Church. He says it this way. Where you place your hope is imperative to your experience of joy. Now, joy is another one of those words that we tend to talk about a lot during the Christmas season. We we talk about having Christmas joy. We all want joy. Joy, And and, and what Matt is getting at here is that our experience of joy, which we all definitely want, is inextricably linked to where we place our hope. Now, I don't know if you've noticed recently, but we are bombarded with all the things, people, places, personalities, etc., etc., to place our hope in, especially this time of year. We can be tempted in this Christmas season to get caught up in all the stuff, right? Right? I've got to have the latest iPhone or the Samsung. Any other Samsung people? No, probably just me. Anyway, whatever. Uh, whatever you're into, there is likely a new one out now that you don't need but definitely want. For me, um, it's actually this, this thing on my wrist. Um, this, is, this is a Garmin 455, um, and I really like it. It's a, it's a running watch, but it's kind of a smart watch, so it's got some of the smart features, but not too many smart features. I don't want my watch distracting me all the time, so I want... Uh, a training watch, a fitness watch that's got a few smart features, not super smart. Um, I wear this thing every day. It tracks all of my running. It tracks my sleep, my recovery, um, all right here on the watch, connected to an app on my phone. I love it. It's great. But they have now released a Forerunner 265, and there's a whole lot of other models. If you're into Garmin and things, you know that I'm not covering nearly the wide range of models of watches they make. But the one I want is the 400 265. And one of the reasons that I really want it because it's co- is because it's cooler than this one. What, part of what makes it cooler is it has a nice shiny LED screen. And it's a, and it's a touch screen. This one's not a touch screen. <laughs> we can get caught up in silly things like that. It does some other nerdy cool things that this one doesn't do. But at the end of the day, I want one. I don't need one. And this is the time of year that we can get so caught up in that. We can actually end up putting our hope, that thing that's connected to our joy, in things and in stuff. And and we can put our hope in people too, right? Uh, We can put our hope in relationships, in friendships, in our kids, in our marriage. Uh, In addition, uh, we just had an election. And the election cycle coming next fall It's probably going to be the most insane one we've ever seen. We can put our hope in elections, in politicians, and political parties. But the question is, with all of those things, how's it working? If we're honest, we all know that every one of those things can and will let us down at some point. And when our hope is in whatever it is that goes, so goes our joy. I believe that even our experience of Christmas Day itself points to this fact in our lives. 
How many times have you gotten really excited about Christmas and, and, and all the build up to it? Maybe it started with some Black Friday shopping and, and putting up all the decorations, then the holiday parties and get togethers and everything leading up to the big day. And then Christmas Day happens. Christmas morning happens, you open up all the gifts, maybe you've got kids and you get, to, you get the, the excitement of watching them open up gifts and be all excited. Maybe you enjoy a, a meal with the family, and then it's done, and then it's over. Um, a quick Google search will show you that the Christmas blues is more than just um, some songs on the radio. Um, it's actually a thing that mental health practitioners are talking about. It's a thing that happens to us. We tend to get depressed. <laughs> After Christmas, why? Because our hope is in all of these things and the experiences and the people, and eventually those things can let us down. And again, where we put our hope is imperative to our experience of joy. So, knowing that putting our hope in these things will leave us let down and lacking joy, let's take a look at where our hope should go. The writer of the letter of the Hebrews tells us exactly where our hope should be. In chapter 10, starting in verse 19, it says this. We'll read through all of it, and then we'll discuss a little bit. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. A couple of things I want to pull out here. Um, in verse 19, the writer says, since we have confidence. <laughs> Think about that. Isn't that what we're really after? With, with so much in our lives that's unsure, that's moving around, that's wavering, that's tossed all over the place, don't we need something that we can place our confidence in? He continues, that confidence is to enter the most holy place. So this isn't just some generic confidence, some sense of self-insurance, some like self-inflating thing. It's confidence to approach our Heavenly Father, to go boldly to Him with whatever is on our hearts, to seek Him out, to spend time with Him. We can have confidence to do that. And notice that the source of our confidence is not us. The source of our confidence is not how well we've done in life, the kind of year we're having. It's, it's nothing to do with us. Our confidence is by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. This is an anchor point for us. Because of what Jesus has done, his work, we can go boldly to our Father who loves us. If we go on. In verse 23, he says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. That's what I want for you this Christmas season. Let's hold on to the hope that we have, the hope that Christ brings on Christmas morning, but also knowing that Christmas is only the beginning. Hold on to that hope unswervingly. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. As I read this, it reminds me of another passage uh, and another promise from the one who is faithful. Paul writes in Philippians in chapter 1, verse 6, he says this, Being confident of this, again we come back to this word confidence, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That is a promise to anchor to, because I don't know if you're like me, but, but I can see in my own life that I'm not there yet. <laughs> I, I haven't arrived. Now, I can, I can definitely look back and I can see that God has begun a good work in my life. I can see evidence of his work and his faithfulness in my life, but I can also see that I haven't gotten it all yet. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've got plenty of regret. I've messed up a ton. But the promise is this, he's not finished. And the God who started this good work in me, he's going to bring it to 
completion. That's the kind of thing that we can anchor to. That is the truth. That is the hope that we can hold this season. So let's do. Let's hold on to that kind of hope. Let's anchor ourselves in that. The last bit of our Hebrews passage says this, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Last thing I'll say as we start to wrap up is when our anchor is properly set, when our hope is in Jesus, the natural byproduct is that we begin to look outside of ourselves to the people around us and we begin to see them more the, more the way that God does. So don't miss that this Christmas. As we do wrap up, I, I, I want to finish with just a simple question and just give you a chance to, to ponder it and maybe to respond to it. The question is simply this. Where have you placed your hope? Where's, what is your hope in right now? What are you anchored to? Have you gotten caught up in the rush of the season, the running back and forth, the shopping, the parties, the, the meals, all the things that have to get done? Have you gotten caught up in all of that? The stuff that's not necessarily wrong, but certainly can be distracting and certainly will let us down. Maybe your hope's been in a relationship and that relationship isn't going well or maybe even ended. Whatever the case, I want to invite you to join me in placing our hope in the only person that will never let us down. Let us anchor ourselves to the person and work of Jesus. Let us find hope not just in the birth of a Savior that we will celebrate this Christmas, but in his life, in his death, and his resurrection, and the work he has begun in us and has promised that he will bring to completion. I invite you to pray with me towards that end. Father, thank you for the Christmas season. Thank you that we get the opportunity to celebrate the coming of Jesus, the coming of a Savior but God, thank you also that it doesn't end at Christmas, that that child that came did a lot more than just come into the world. God, he, he came into the world to save the world. He lived a life we couldn't live, and he died a death that we deserve. He paid a price that, that we couldn't pay, and he was raised again. God, let us anchor ourselves there. God, help us to put our hope there. If we've been placing it in other places, in other people, in other things, God, I pray that today we would place it firmly in the truth of you and your son. So that when the storms rage, when Christmas is over, when things fail us, God, that we won't be shaken because of the firm anchor we have in the hope of Christ. God, we ask for that today. In your name we pray. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join us uh, and giving us the opportunity to speak into your life. Uh, before you head out, here's just a couple of reminders for you. If you'd like to help keep our church strong, we encourage you um, to head on over to our website at nextlevelchurch.org slash give and choose one of the options there. Every dollar you give helps make sure that our church can remain strong and more than ever continue our mission to raise the reputation of Jesus where we live, work, and play. Also, if this message has helped you anyway, we encourage you, like the video, share it, subscribe, comment, do all of those things. You know how to do that. And help us get this message out to people who need it. Now, by way of benediction, let me read again Paul's words in Philippians 1, verse 6. He says this, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. As we leave today, let us do so with hope, anchored in the truth of Jesus. Have a great day, and we'll see you back next week.